going on guys midnight sun 518 here we are back with another install video on sasha my 2017 tacoma dr trd pro jeez uh this is the uptake snorkel as you can see it is very good looking um i am absolutely in love with the styling i'm in love with the look and i am so happy that i have this addition to my beautiful overlanding off-road rig so uh yeah we're gonna cover a whole bunch of random things if you guys have been a part of the channel before you kind of know how i run these videos so we're gonna hop right into it let's do it i finally did it i bought a damn snorkel now i was fully intending on waiting for buying the snorkel for like a long time because there's a lot of other upgrades that i wanted to put my effort and money into uh hi cat However, unfortunately, the company that I ended up going with, Up Top Overland, is going to be uh, no longer making the uptake, which is their snorkel for a third gen Tacoma cat. Can you? We have ourselves the uptake, which is super cool. Uh, this is the snorkel side that's going to be running up the body of the Tacoma, which is super, super dope. This is the part that will be um, going to the air box itself. Uh, we've got a couple of hose fittings here. Um, a, what is that, three inch to two and a half inch hose, like rubber hose connector. Um, this should be the adapter that goes to the air box itself. I don't really know what this is. It's probably gonna fit inside of that as like the adapter connector thingamajig. Of course, we got our, our little clamps here that tighten down. A whole assortment of nuts and bolts. This is kind of cool. They included a nibbling tool. Nibbling. So basically what this does is we'll drill a hole in the aluminum siding of the front right front passenger quarter panel. And then we can go along the edge with the nibbling tool and clip, 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 create a little hole. Now something that I want to do that I'm kind of surprised they didn't do is I want to get like a hydrophobic mesh that I can cut to size that I can sandwich behind this plate so that the uh, intake is a little bit more hydrophobic. Because you see you see a whole bunch of like performance cars and that kind of stuff that are running the whole high horsepower and all that sort of stuff with cold air intakes and blah, 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 blah. Um, and yes, I'm doing that on the speed for those of you that are not following that project. Shameless plug. But anyways, so, Using a little like mesh thing that goes around the outside of the filter, it's hydrophobic and will keep water from soaking up into the filter and making its way into the intake. So I would like to prevent that. Um, and so I'm gonna experiment with it a little bit, not in this video, but I do want to cut to fit a little hydrophobic mesh to go on that portion of the intake and uh, hopefully keep more water and debris out. But uh, I don't know if that's going to starve the engine of air or anything like that at all. Oh, this is really nice. Up top included, they already had it on here, but like a squishy rubber gasket seal type of material um, for the side of the snorkel that will be touching your paint, um, which is awesome. The actual work uh, in order to get this snorkel installed is going to be relatively substantial. Um, if you guys are installing a snorkel, I guarantee this is not your first rodeo when it comes to putting aftermarket performance parts and that type of stuff on your Tacoma um, or other vehicle. I don't know if you are watching this just to see what kinds of snorkels they have out there. Um, it's not your first rodeo, I am sure. So I don't have to give you all the nitty gritty and uh, scary things because you've already probably done a few bumper cuts and that kind of thing. Um, I'm just kind of getting all my parts laid out here and then we're gonna go out <clears throat> and start laying templates and whatnot on the truck Because um, we're gonna need to 
Basically end up putting the snorkel together for the most part, setting it up along the side of the truck to figure out exactly where we're gonna be trimming our hole um, using our, our this as a template. Uh, and then we're just gonna cut a hole, trim the intake a little bit and make everything fit. Not gonna be too bad. I'm expecting this to take probably somewhere around two hours. For those of you that want to see an incredibly in-depth video on how to install this snorkel, highly recommend going over to the Up Top Overland YouTube channel because they have a full install video. I will be showing that install. Uh, obviously, that's kind of why I'm here for this video. Um, however, if you want, you know, a different view, you know, some better camera angles or something like that, because I am just one person working with a singular GoPro, um, absolutely check them out after you watch my video, obviously, that's how that works. Sweet, let's get into it, shall we? I figured I'll run through a brief overview and then, you know, delete all the footage later. Okay, so I have all of the bags laying out just the way that it needs to go. Uh, or like, I guess where the hardware is gonna be going per, per piece. So bag A is gonna be used to bolt the color matched plate to the top of the uh, snorkel like inlet portion, all right? Bag B, right over here is going to be what we're going to use in order to attach the top of the snorkel to the snorkel body itself so we have these threaded brass inserts right here so bag b is going to go through the top of the snorkel and into the body all right bag c is the hardware for attaching the side color matched plate which we will do pretty much at the very end of the install uh, bag d is what we have the hardware in that will be screwing through these little holes in here to attach the snorkel to the uh, right quarter panel, right front quarter panel of the truck, all right? Bag E is gonna be a little plus nut uh, that we're gonna be using in order to help support the center tube, um, like intake tube within the fender of the truck, uh, which basically we end up using this bracket right here we mount through this hole into this plus nut, and then the other end of it connects to the bottom of one of these, uh, what do they call it, banjo clamps, something like that. Once you tighten this down, it'll reveal threads on the other side, which we can then use bag G in order to attach that, all right? Um, bag F, kind of skipping numbers here, is what is going to go through the side of this bracket to mount inside of bag E's plus nut um, in order to hold that tube in place, all right? Uh, bag H, I don't need because I have an up top overland uh, roof rack, but if you don't have a roof rack from them and you're instead using a Prinzu rack or something like that, um, you may need to use uh, bag H, which basically gives you a couple of spacers and then a couple of threaded bolts in order to run into uh, the roof of your truck to some pre-existing factory holes. If y'all need to find those holes or are curious how we made space for these spacers, then uh, please check out that roof rack install. Um, bag I is gonna be the singular bolt that's gonna run through this little plus right here that's gonna connect to the back of the snorkel. There's a mounting hole right there on the back of the snorkel. Um, that connects right into that bracket. Uh, that's bag I, and then bag J, of course, is gonna be our drill bit with our little adapter right here that's gonna keep us from punching it all the way through. And of course, we have the nibbler. So I'm gonna assemble most of this in here on the table. I'm gonna get the intake tube thrown together. I'm gonna get the top of the snorkel with the plate and stuff put on just because it's pretty and mounted to the side. Um, and then we'll get out there and start removing the fenders. I forgot about the last bag, which is K. Um, this gives you another one of those plus nuts. And so basically, if you have ditch lights that you're running on your car, um, you will drill, excuse you, you'll drill a hole into the top of the body of the uptake. Um, and then you'll run the plus nut from bag K and that will become your new mounting point for, I know, I wanna build it too. Anyways, that'll become your new mounting point for the ditch light. So I don't know if I'm gonna need to do that because my ditch lights are already on a bracket that are being held up, but I think the uptake sticks up a little bit above um, like the hood line. So I'm probably gonna end up having to do that. No big deal, but uh, yeah. So that's what bag K is for. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install the head of the snorkel to the actual body itself. So what you're going to do is you literally slippity doodad that into there. You're going to take bag A and then you have, we'll go lock washer, flat washer. Now I shall take bag B, which are the short ones. And I'm going to install the face plate for the front of the snorkel. A couple other little steps I'm just going to kind of do early and get out of the way since I'm already here. You can take this plate and this rubber gasket and it's got a stick back to it. So if I peel, peel that off and I'll go ahead and align it. that yeah it's pretty good just kind of press it down cool now we got that gasket on there so now when we mount this to the side of the snorkel it'll get a really good sealing surface just like that and we'll put that off to the side for now that hood strut is so cool oh boy so we get to have some fun here. We get to take out the intake box. You could just leave the upper portion here, but I think I'm gonna take that out anyways because it's gonna be a little bit more out of the way because we gotta take out the under portion, the bottom box, because right there, you can see that little circular thing sticking into the fender. That's what we need to get access to. Now, we do need to get into the fender, uh, housing on the side here, which means I need to remove my inner fender liner. This is going to be a little bit of a pain um, because there's a whole bunch of random body clips and stuff in here and there's a whole bunch of 10 millimeter screws running along the side, um, but it needs to come out. So I'm going to take that out. Uh, I'm not really going to show that process because you're going to remove some screws and then you're going to yank the plastic. I'm probably going to leave my fender liner out um, because here, hopefully soon, I'm going to be getting the tire oversized oversized tire fitment kit from C4 Fabrications, um, and that requires me to remove my inner fenders anyways, so I'm just going to leave it out. It's not that big of a deal. It's not the end of the world. Um, and then when I get that kit, then I will be putting its replacement in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this fender out. Um, if I have any sort of like weird hangups or something like that, I will let y'all know so that you can uh, enjoy them with me. See you in a second. So I decided while taking the inner fender liner out that I'm gonna actually take my intake off first because there's a couple of little clips that are going into the sheet metal of, of the fender area uh, that I would rather have this off so that I can take care of that. So you've got a 10 millimeter little V-band there. Not V-band, I don't know what it is. It's a clamp. Uh, and you have, I'm just gonna leave that plugged in, it's fine. And you can use a, a flathead or something. Be very, very careful not to tear your, your boot here. Just like that. And then because we're leaving, leaving the MAF installed, just kind of spin it that way. Then you got your engine air filter. It's a good time to take a quick peek at it. It looks good. Okay, now comes the goods. So down in here, this is definitely not a 10 millimeter. I think this is a 12. Yep, so we got a 12 millimeter socket. Grab myself an extension. We got a 12 mil right here. And 12 mil right here. And then there's one actually on the back side for y'all to see right there. So it's just those three, and then this should come out. Now with those three screws out, and we are, we should just be able to lift and pull, and take our box right out. So those tabs I was talking about, there's one right here, there's one right here, there's one right there, and then there's one all the way down here in the corner. So those are holding the fender liner in. The rest of them are in the metal that's tucked up up in here, 
but getting those two off first will give us access to the rest of them. And you have to pinch them somehow from the back in order to push them out. It's really weird. Yep, fender liner is out and it's very warped because at some point I just started yanking on it. So there's a whole bunch of these right here, right all along the inside. And these are weird because they're a little square tab and they have these two little buttons on the side that you have to compress, right, in order to pull it out. But when they're like, you know, there's one here, which is broken now, there's one here. Uh, basically at each of these little screw points or whatever is one of those tabs, um, most unfortunately. So I yanked them out, I just broke them, screw it. Next, we're gonna need to pull this little piece of styrofoam out of here, allegedly, and it'll give us a little bit more room. Sweet, now we have more access to the inside and that's just the, the door panel right there. Oh, this is pretty neat, I've never seen the inside of the quarter panel. Awesome. I also cleaned up the area around the intake here a little bit, and then I cleaned up the inside, minus that leaf that just fell in here, cleaned up this metal portion of the fender flare. And then I went ahead and mocked up, I threw my snorkel on the side of the Tacoma to kind of see where the center portion of it was going to be resting. And then I set some tape on here so that we can draw on it. This is where we're going to be putting our um, marks for our drill holes. Now, if you guys don't have ditch lights, don't worry about it. Because I do have ditch lights, I have to take this off and I'm gonna end up mounting it onto the side of the, or the top of the, the snorkel itself, right? Um, so I gotta go ahead and undo that real quick and then we'll move on to the next step. So the ditch light is off and the next step, next we can get up on top of the truck here. And if you guys, once again, don't have a roof rack mounted up top or Prinsu roof rack, then you will have to do some modification here, um, i.e. taking this little um, gasket material off and then uh, cutting a hole through it so that you can access the screw bolts underneath. Uh, if you guys have any questions on that, you can go, I guess I'll drop a link in the description for my roof rack install and just kind of like fast forward. I'll put the timestamp in there too so you can um, take a peek and do it that way. Anyways, so this is a five uh, millimeter Allen key, and we're just gonna undo both of these uh, screws right here. And this is gonna be where we're mounting the upper bracket for the thing, the snorkel. I am hoping that you can see this all right, hopefully. So you're gonna grab this bracket with the big plus on it and the bag labeled I for India. And it's gonna go underneath the up top and it's gonna sit on top of this uh, bracket right here. Uh, so underneath the fairing and on top of the bracket. And then you can go ahead and throw these screws back in. I forget the bag number uh, for the hardware for this portion of it if you do not have an install or if uh, you do not have an installed roof rack. But we'll go ahead and get these uh, set in but not tight. And then we're gonna grab the snorkel itself, and I'm actually going to, whoa, I'm going to grab a four and tighten down these screws holding on the head of the snorkel until it's snug. And I'll probably go back and thread in or uh, put in some some sealant in here in order to maximize the amount of air that's coming through the actual snorkel portion itself and not from the surrounding enclosure. Son of a bitch. Awesome. So with that all snugged up, we're gonna go ahead and rest this. I'm gonna kind of just push this little rubber gasket down. And this gasket doesn't need to be like a perfect seating surface. It's just protecting the paint of the truck once you have this up here. But we're gonna go ahead and get this set up along the side of the truck here. Oh my God, that's gonna look so sick. And then we're gonna grab bag I and thread it on in. Once again, we're leaving it relatively loose everywhere. And this is just so that we can hold it up against the truck. And then you just kind of push the snorkel until it falls into place wherever it wants to rest. There's not a 
not a whole lot of places that it can really, really sit at. It's really just the one. So now we can go back with a Sharpie and we can mark out the inner diameter of the big hole along with one, two, and three screw holes. Those three holes are where we're gonna drill through in order to mount the snorkel to the fender itself. And then that other one obviously is for the intake, uh, the intake hose. So I'm gonna mark these holes. Went ahead and took off the snorkel um, so that I can have access to this little spot right here. So we have those three holes, one hole, two hole, three hole. So next we get to use bag J and our little nibbler tool. So they give us this little stop spacer right here, which basically we just slide over top and then give ourselves about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch, whatever you want. Uh, and then we're gonna tighten down this threaded, threaded screw right here. And that's gonna stop us from punching that far into the fender. Now comes the point of no return. So we're gonna be cutting into the fender. So each of those three holes, we just kind of line it up and drill until they go through. Pretty self-explanatory. This one, however, uh, the manufacturer recommends that you draw a circle about a quarter of an inch-ish outside of the original one. And that is what we are going to hit with our nibbler. Um, and the reason for this is the existing hole is going to make it super, super snug and super, super difficult to get your, your piping through there. Um, so they had just have you enlarge it a little bit because you're never going to see that anyways. Uh, the holes are drilled. I'm going to have to clean them up a little bit with a, um, if you have a little hand file or something like that, kind of clean up the edges. And then something else that uh, you're going to want to do I have already done some cutting on my Tacoma, obviously. So in here somewhere is a Toyota Metallic Silver, or Millennium Silver, sorry. Now, obviously my truck is the Cement Gray, not the Millennium Silver, but uh, I didn't have a Duplicolor pen for that, and I haven't ordered the exact color match. But once again, you're not gonna see this. So after kind of sanding down the edges here to make sure everything is flat and smooth, like I got a little dimple sticking up right there, you're gonna to wanna to go back and put a little bit of nail polish or like a color match uh, rub all around on the inside to prevent the side panel from uh, rusting, um, which I don't know if this is aluminum or steel. I'm assuming it's aluminum, so it shouldn't rust, but you never know. So now I'm gonna get the nibbler and we're gonna to get to nibbling. Nibbler and nibbles pretty well. Uh, it's not a perfect circle, but it doesn't need to be. I just did a quick test fit to make sure that the circle is wide enough um, for the flex hose to fit through, and it totally is. So now, we get to do the next thing. So we're gonna go back over to our air box because I forgot to do this just a second ago. And this plastic piece on the end, this little scoop thing right here, uh, that needs to go. So we've got a tab here, and then one on the other side can get a flat head in and pull up on that, and then it'll slide right off. And then I'm gonna get an X-Acto knife, and I'm just gonna trim off this little bit of plastic right here up until about that point so that our clamp can sit on top of it. So it will look just like that when you're done. So now we can take our little adapter here, and it takes a lot of finagling. <clears throat> There you go, good and tight, just like that. And then we have our four inch clamp right here, which I'm gonna loosen up a little bit. Plenty tight. We just used our 10 millimeter to tighten that back down. So now we get to go ahead and get our air box rested back down in here. 
and we'll get those screws thrown back in and get the top of it put back together. Now we get the pleasure of adding um, a little a attachment bracket right here. So here is the intake and then you got a little body clip thingamajig here and then this hole is where we're going to be attaching our next bracket. So bag E and F and then this bracket are what we're going to be doing next. So bag E has this fancy little plus nut thing. Long story short, we're going to take our little screw that's supplied, we're going to put a wrench in here, and then we're going to take our other little flat washer, and then we're going to thread it onto this plus nut thing. And this is just going to give us some leverage. And then this is a 10 mil, and so we're going to insert this into the that hole, and then we're going to tighten down on the 10 mil, and that's going to give us sort of kind of like a rib nut. It's going to be a threaded insert. And as I said before, it's going to go right there as I drop it. It blows my mind how well that worked, but there we have our little threaded insert right there. And if you look at it from the other side, we have right there. It just pulls that little, the little tabs out. And so that's where our bracket is going to mount. That's going to assist in holding up our intake tube. So now we actually get to attach some stuff. This tube right here, I test fit the four inch to three inch on the end of that. So we need to slide this into the intake and then tighten down this clamp over top of the both of them. So uh, I'm gonna do that. So what I actually did is I took this flex hose which was connected to the pipe and I connected it to that flex hose and then I ran it into the fender before I plugged it into the intake. Um, just because once I had it in the, in, or the intake side in and I went to connect the, this hose to the intake flex hose, it didn't really work too well. So I put it all together. Before I tighten any of those clamps down though, I'm going to get the snorkel remounted along the side of the truck and get this fed inside. And this way I can get our actual mounting hardware connected um, so that I can get those tightened down before I tighten down this hose into place. So these nuts are actually going to be a 13 millimeter and so basically you got to reach your hand up inside the fender and then find the nut or the uh, the bolt in order to add the nut to it. Now the bolt itself I believe is also a 5, um, it might be a 4, nope most definitely a 5 millimeter um, allen key so just get your allen key resting on that one and then your socket on the other side and tighten them down. Got the snorkel bolted down to the car uh, with those three bolts. I will say getting the hex attached to the one up there is really freaking difficult. But you are using a five millimeter and then it's a 14 millimeter. Um, well, I used a, an open-ended box wrench on the other side because you aren't gonna be able to fit a socket up here. Uh, so now that this is good and rigid down here, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bolt tightened right here that goes to the snorkel itself and then I'll tighten down the two that are connecting to the roof rack. So I got all those bands tightened down, all three of them, and this is where we're going to be attaching our support bracket. Oh sorry, not this one. This one is where we're going to be attaching our support bracket. So we're going to go ahead and pull out bag F and then of course our bracket itself and it comes with a, a spacer as well as your flat washer, lock washer, and your screw. The bag label G is gonna have our hardware uh, for the other side of the bracket here. I'm gonna need two hands, but basically you got your spacer, screw, uh, or the plate, your flat washer, lock washer, and then the screw, and then this will, the support bracket will rest right there, and then we'll put our flat washer and then our nut on top of there. We got that bracket on there. This is a 10 millimeter bolt uh, or nut, Coming up on the last couple of steps here. Uh, if you guys do have a ditch light like I do, you very well could get away with just having your ditch light mounted like this, right? But if you wanted to mount it on, to, on top of the snorkel, then they do have the extra kit here, kit K, so that you can drill a hole in the top of the snorkel, add another one of those lock uh, tab things that we use down in the fender. 
and then go ahead and have that put on there um, the way that you want it. So I might do that just because if I leave this here like this, it's going to be blocking a lot of the light. Um, and I'm going to want to clean that up. For those of you that don't have ditch lights, the next step, we're going to get some, I think it's called TCV. I don't know. It's basically a automotive silicone glue or like a, like a silicone caulk, right? And we're going to run it all along the inside of this bead right here, connecting the plastic housing of the snorkel to the intake hose pipe itself. And the reason why we're using silicone here um, instead of bands, one, because the plastic is really, really hard, but two, the manufacturer uh, up top overland found that when you're rock crawling and all that sort of stuff, there's a lot of flex obviously throughout the front of your truck. And so putting silicone right here, it has a little bit more give um, between the intake and the engine side of things and your snorkel. So you cause less like cracking and wear over time. But yeah, so we're gonna throw a little bit of silicone in there and then we put the plate on, fire it up. So we have ourselves here some RTV black gasket maker. Uh, this is an automotive version, so it's supposed to be resistant to oil and everything like that. This is the same stuff that I used for my um, valve cover gasket in a couple of spots. But I'm just going to go ahead and give a pretty <clears throat> decent amount of gasket maker right there. And we can shove that on through but what we're going to want to do again just like we did underneath the fender is we have our little dual dual setup here we have our box wrench sandwiched between the two flat washers we'll go ahead and screw this down real good go ahead and align this into the hole pop it down and then once again it's that 10 millimeter on top All right, we got that in there real good. And now it goes without saying because this is a snorkel and indeed we don't want any air to be coming in this side. We only want it to be coming in the top. But we're gonna get a decent amount of RTV thrown right on top of this uh, little spot right here that we're gonna be gluing on. Get a good amount, squeeze some extra down in there. Awesome. That may have been a little much, but it's fine. So then we're gonna be taking the required hardware here and running it through our ditch light in order to mount that in there. Ditch light <clears throat> installed and probably pointed the right way. It's relatively equivalent to what it is on the other side. I might have to angle it up or down a little bit, um, but I'll do that when it gets dark. I'm not going to bother showing you guys. But I did make that uh, RTV seal running along the inside here, connecting the intake hose to the snorkel itself. And the last thing that we have to do is get our plate installed. So the last bag you guys should have left is bag C. And then of course you have this plate, which we already put that rubber gasket on the back that you just kind of rest in the place here. And then you put your color matched cover plate sitting right over in the top in front. And then we're gonna be using the hardware from bag C to screw it all down. There you have it, my dudes. The uptake snorkel is fully installed and ready to go. I'll probably give it a few minutes to let the RTV kind of dry a little bit and harden up before I go ahead and start the truck just to make sure the flex and whatnot doesn't bust the seal while it's in there uh, before it even has a chance to form. Last thing, if you guys are putting your fender liner back in or you want to put this styrofoam back in, it's just to kind of get it worked in however it came out. Uh, it's going to be kind of a pain in the butt and I need two hands in order to like really get this in there. I'm going to end up putting that back in just because I have no reason not to have it in there and there's nothing keeping it from being in. Um, but the fender liner, I will be leaving out. So however you guys took that out, put it back in the same way. And then uh, if y'all have, you know, your mud flap or something like that and you wanna put that back in as well, then you have to do that, so. Here to be leaks of any kind. 
I guess we won't really know until we know. Sun aside, that's what the snorkel looks from the viewpoint of the inside of the cab. It kind of just looks like a reflection of the A-pillar in the sunlight. Um, it just sticks up a smidgen beyond the window, and then of course you got that little bump right there. So it doesn't do anything for obstructing your view, um, which is awesome. Gotta look so good. Well, my dudes, it is nighttime. As you can see, the snorkel looks freaking incredible. Um, I forgot to do this outro video during the day when the sun was out and you could see it a little bit better. Um, I did get a little bit of a montage going in there for you. Now, I did drive around, gave it a little quick test go and got my ditch light all angled out. Um, so that is sitting pretty exactly where I want it. Man, this thing looks so good. Um, it's not low profile because it's quite beefy sticking out of the side of the truck, but I will say that when you're looking at it from afar, um, you don't really catch it with your eye. It kind of blends into the, the body of the truck, and it's one of those things that kind of gives you that double take. You look back and you're like, man, what the heck was that thing? Um, so I like that a lot. It really adds to the build. Uh, up top did a really good job, an incredible job um, designing this uh, and making it easy to install, easy to set up and uh i mean it's quite functional so if you guys have any questions uh definitely drop a comment let me know uh what your thoughts are what your feelings are and i do my best to respond as quickly as i can and uh obviously reach out to up top themselves because they're the the ones that created it the ones that designed it so any design type of thing i really can't answer it unfortunately um, up top is no longer going to be producing this snorkel uh, from what I understand which is why I bought it so soon before doing the lift and the bigger tires and that kind of stuff on my truck uh, is because they're no longer going to be producing the snorkel so if you guys are seeing this video unfortunately their snorkel the uptake is no longer in production if they do have any leftover um, on their shelves obviously go grab them because uh, it's pretty awesome but other than that you're probably little SOL when it comes to uh, trying to pick one up for yourselves, but I don't know. Maybe they'll come back to it. My thought is that uh, they're going to be allocating funds and resources towards the 2024 Tacomas, um, and they're coming up with all sorts of new stuff to go towards them. I don't really know why they're not going to be making the uptake anymore. I, I don't work there. I have no idea, but uh, they won't be. So with that, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have, drop a like and a subscribe. Please help me out. I'm at 183 subscribers right now, but uh, your support and your love of the channel and uh, the hobbies and all that sort of stuff is really what helps me out and gives me the desire and the drive to be able to go out and continue on with the filming and the production to be able to get this out on YouTube so that you guys can see my journey and the journey of Sasha as she becomes the ultimate overlanding beast that she will be by 2026. Uh, when I go up to the great north uh, Alaskan wilderness and uh, check that out for a little while. So, anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed. See you next time. Midnight Sun out.